Hello everybody, Resonance here, and welcome to my tutorial on the basics and strategy of a Pokemon battle and how to make predictions. During this video, I'll be going over what exactly a Pokemon battle is, the general mechanics of it, and everything that you need to know to enjoy competitive Pokemon commentaries. Thank you so much in advance for supporting my channel and the content that I really have a passion for creating. Like with Age of Empires 2, Pokemon define my childhood and still defines who I am today. Both games have a really approachable single player that we all fondly remember, but they also have this incredible strategic depth in multiplayer that is quite different from what you'd expect. With potential newcomers or returning players to the franchise with Pokemon Go and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee on the Nintendo Switch, let's talk a bit about what a Pokemon battle really is, and what makes them so interesting to watch. Pokemon is a simultaneous turn-based strategy game, and in a battle, each player locks in their choice at the same time, and then the turn plays out. Players can either do one of two things. They can select one of their Pokemon's four moves, or choose to switch out their Pokemon on the field with one in their party. The game kinda operates on a sort of rock-paper-scissors-on-steroids type system that generally decides which player has the advantage each turn. This is further complicated by the following key mechanics. There are currently 18 different types with their own unique set of matchups. Pokemon can either be one type or two types, and their respective moves can only be one type. Type advantages and resistances also stack. So currently we've got rock, paper, scissors with 18 different types of rock. But obviously it isn't anywhere near that simple, or the game wouldn't be so popular and such a joy to play. The many attacks in this game are wielded by countless different Pokemon that have their own unique combinations of stats as well. These stats affect how much damage they take, how much damage each specific move they have will deal, and most importantly, who goes first during each turn. If both players choose to use move instead of switching out, then the Pokemon with the higher speed stat goes first. These stat combinations add a ton of depth, since even if you have the type advantage, perhaps your opponent is faster and can knock you out first. In that case, maybe you need to switch out instead. In addition, their specific combination of defenses may make your Pokémon not able to deal enough damage, even with the type advantage. Every Pokémon requires different strategies to use and defeat, due to their types and stats. However, they also have their own unique move pools as well. Players have a lot of freedom in what four moves their Pokémon will bring, but knowing that most moves aren't available to most Pokémon helps players make strategic decisions. For example, Vaporeon can't learn Fire-type moves like Flamethrower, but since it's a water type, you can expect it to learn all sorts of water and ice type attacks. If this already sounds overwhelming, don't worry because the game displays what type each Pokemon is on the screen and also how each of your moves will match up. Thankfully you don't have to memorize every Pokemon and their moves since the game is divided into several playable tiers and formats. Picking your moves is like a build order in an RTS game. There's a learnable set of standard ones that most players will follow, but a really skilled player will constantly adapt to the metagame by bringing different moves and also different Pokémon. The sheer volume of Pokémon and moves just adds extra depth to the game as you get more experience. If this doesn't sound interesting enough though, then don't worry, we're just getting started. You're not just throwing attacks at your opponent either, since each move has their own unique attributes beyond just their types and how much damage they deal. Moves often have unique secondary effects that add quite a bit of depth to the battle, for example, the move Facade deals double the damage if the user happens to have a status effect on them. But what exactly is a status effect? Well, not all moves in Pokémon just deal damage and have unique secondary effects. Some completely change the way a battle is played. The move Toxic applies a badly poisoned status effect to the opposing Pokémon, which causes them to lose a small percentage of their maximum HP at the end of each turn. However, this passive damage doubles every single turn. While the badly poisoned status effect is kept upon switch out, the ever increasing passive damage actually resets when the affected Pokemon is switched. This unique mechanic forces your opponent to think very carefully about how long they want to stay in before the toxic damage inevitably knocks them out. You can of course play around this too by predicting when your opponent might be forced to switch out. So let's loop back again. Why do we just talk about moves, stats, and typings? Knowing the basics of each is essential to understanding whether or not each player is going to pick one of their four moves or choose to switch out. Competitive Pokémon is really like a game of chess, in which you must carefully evaluate each turn to see who has the advantage, and decide when you and your opponent 
should strategically trade pieces. In a singles battle, there are generally two reasons to switch. Either the opponent's Pokémon poses an immediate threat to yours, or you don't pose a threat to your opponent. In general, switching out your Pokémon always happens before moves resolve, so you can use this as an opportunity to predict an opponent's attack and get the advantage for the next turn. However, the Pokémon that you send in is still going to get hit with your opponent's attack, and this residual chip damage inevitably brings the game to a close. Of course, your opponent also has the same opportunity here to make an expanding brain play and even predict your prediction. I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a later video. The mental aspect of competitive Pokémon is the core of the game, and man is it entertaining. There are few things more satisfying than predicting an opponent's switch out and going for a completely different move that just instantly KOs the incoming Pokémon. Or you can flex even harder by simultaneously choosing to switch out at the same time as your opponent to immediately gain the upper hand that way. Sometimes you'll even see players switch out two turns in a row in what we call a double switch, just to try and secure an advantage. Or perhaps you're not going to switch at all, because it's just too obvious. So your opponent might over-predict and click the wrong move while you get a free turn. Competitive Pokémon requires two distinct skill sets, team building and in-game decision making. I'll cover both of those in greater detail in a tutorial video that you can find a link to below and at the end of this video. By the time you watch this, I may end up remastering that one as well, but first, let's start with my go-to example of interesting in-game decision making. In this battle, you can see me in a situation where I have my Dragon-type Gudra on the field, versus my opponent's Psychic and Steel-type, Jirachi. My Gudra carries the Fire-type attack, Flamethrower, which is super effective against Jirachi's Steel-type. My opponent knows this, since I've already revealed earlier on in the battle that I have the new Flamethrower. I took careful note of my opponent's team, and instead of going for the Flamethrower, I went for Thunderbolt instead, which would have done very little damage to Jirachi. However, I knew that my opponent would make the safe play and go out into their Lapras, not wanting to risk losing their Jirachi in a trade. I also figured that them going into Lapras was the most likely play, since Lapras, unlike Jirachi, actually threatens my Gudra with Lapras's Ice-type attacks. My choice of going for Thunderbolt ends up paying off, as I'm able to take out Lapras successfully. My opponent cannot switch the Lapras out anymore, and makes the correct play of trading damage since it's already too low. Once the Lapras faints, my opponent once again has the switch momentum, and can send out his Zangoose, which is faster than my Gudra, and is able to KO me at this health range. And then, the battle continues. The best part is, there's far more to a Pokémon battle than what we've covered so far, and if I've piqued your curiosity, you can look forward to a bunch of in-depth Wi-Fi battle commentaries that really go deep into the strategy. Pokémon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are great introductory games to the series, and help keep things simpler for returning fans. However, in all the modern main series games, Pokémon also have abilities and held items that grant them various passive effects. For example, the Pokémon Flygon has the ability Levitate, which passively grants it immunity to the foe's ground-type moves. Each Pokémon can only bring one ability and one held item into battle, and while every Pokémon can hold basically every item, the Pokémon themselves only have a pool of around one to three possible abilities. Some abilities are even unique to that specific Pokémon, and serve as a way to further differentiate each of them beyond their types, move pools, and stats. Abilities and held items add so much more strategy to the game. Thankfully though, you don't need to know the ins and outs of abilities and held items to get started. One thing that is persistent that I'd like to cover is another type of status move that are field effects. The move Light Screen doesn't do any damage at all, and instead it applies a field effect that makes all of your Pokémon take reduced damage from special attacks for 5 turns, so your opponent will either try to remove the field effect through using specific moves like Brick Break, or go for physical attacks instead until the effect wears off. This is a quick segue into the topic that moves are not just one type. They fall into one of three categories, physical attacks, special attacks, and status moves such as Light Screen. Status moves can have all sorts of crazy effects, some that last for a few turns, some that last until the affected player switches out, and some that are kept until removed. All you need to know is that these moves fundamentally change the way the game is played, and make it far more interesting than just taking advantage of type matchups. Now let's loop back again one last time and apply what we've learned. 
So what happens when the battle begins? Well, each player's lead Pokémon that they selected during the team preview will be sent out. You'll often see me choosing my lead Pokémon quite carefully because it's always nice to start out the battle by gaining an immediate advantage, either by correctly threatening out my opponent's lead that I predicted, or by safely leading with the utility Pokémon of my own to gain some type of long-term advantage. A long-term advantage is usually some sort of field or status effect to cripple my opponent's strategy, or just generally disrupt their intended playstyle, such as setting up stealth rocks or spikes, which damage my opponent whenever they switch in. In contrast, an immediate advantage would be if, for example, my Pokémon carried a super effective attack and I was also faster than my opponent. Let's go over two specific interesting situations. Here I can take a look at my opponent's team and know that they would want to lead with a Powdon to generate a long-term advantage. I'm definitely going to want to disrupt this game plan, since I don't have as powerful as a lead and their team revolves around getting such a strong opening. Hippowdon's ability will set up this Sandstorm Weather effect to benefit their team for 5 turns, and to also set up Stealth Rocks, which are a persistent field effect that deals a bit of damage to the opposing Pokémon every time they switch out. Entry hazards like Stealth Rocks, Spikes, and Toxic Spikes are all great ways to start a match, and also force a match to end earlier by punishing your opponent for excessively switching. Alternatively, one example of an immediate threat would be, let's say I know that my opponent is going to lead with that Hippowdon to do exactly what I just said, set up Sandstorm and Stealth Rocks. I need to bait it out, but my opponent makes a good play and immediately threatens out my Steel-type Skarmory with his Rotom Oven, which has a Fire-type and Electric-type attack. I go out to my Nidoking, which is immune to Electric and faster than my opponent. My opponent predicts a Poison-type Sludge Wave, which Hippowdon resists. However, I predicted that switch correctly and went for an Ice Beam instead. With this clever series of plays, I have now successfully stopped the Hippowdon. Another really fun example I have of how awesome Pokémon battles can be is this clip right here. This time my Fire Poison type Salazzle manages to catch my opponent off guard and secure a clean KO on the opposing Jirachi. I'm in a really commanding position with my early prediction on that Jirachi lead and the predicted trick move. My opponent of course sends out his Heat Ram, which is a Fire and Steel type that has the ability Flash Fire, which makes it immune to Fire type moves. The Heat Ram Steel type also makes it immune to my Poison type as well. That's an excellent play on my opponent's part so I naturally predict the Fire-type attack from Heatran, and I go into my Flygon, which is Ground and Dragon. Flygon quad-resists Fire-type attacks and threatens to instantly KO Heatran from full HP with an Earthquake. My opponent knows that Flygon is my best play to switch into, and correctly predicts that by going for a Hidden Power Ice, which instantly kills my Flygon on switch-in, and would have basically done nothing to my Salazzle. However, he knew I could not stay in, because Heatran walls to Lazzle completely, so I had to switch out. That was a really good play. One final piece of the puzzle are moves that raise your own stats, or lower the stats of the opponent. For the most part, any stat changes are lost upon switch out. Players will often seek to end the battle by using a stat boosting move such as Sword Stance and attempting to sweep the opponent's remaining Pokémon. However, you can always stop a sweep by forcing them to switch out, or applying some kind of status effect. The TLDR for that one is that every Pokémon fills some kind of role on the team. One example that I gave above were Sweepers, which tried to end the game by looking for an opportunity to boost their stats to clean up the remaining Pokémon. There are also walls or defensive pivots that are trained to absorb specific types or attacks. Players will spend the first half of the battle competing for an advantage, trying to catch their opponent off guard, and steadily weakening or picking off opposing defensive Pokémon. Once an opportunity presents itself, the win condition, which is usually held in the back, comes out and tries to end the game. A clever player will often think one turn ahead to keep checking the opposing Pokémon, forcing them to switch out, and eventually clearing out all of the pieces that are blocking you from checkmate. This usually involves very careful strategic trading of your own Pokémon, since depending on what the other team is, not all of your Pokémon will be necessary for victory. Every game of Pokémon is a new unique puzzle to solve. One final awesome example of a huge prediction, and this battle I can't wait to post, is imagine this situation. My opponent has a team with a Mega Sableye on it, a notoriously powerful anti-lead Pokémon. 
It's got this nasty ability called Magic Bounce, where it passively reflects back any status effects that target it, and so I couldn't set up spikes even if I wanted to. It loves to spread its own statuses by using Will-O-Wisp to burn things, and usually only carries a Dark-type attacking move. It's also only weak to Fairy-type. And so I decide to lead with my Water Fairy-type, Tapu Fini, which has a complicated ability that basically makes any status moves fail for 5 turns. This means that his Sableye cannot burn me, and is also immediately threatened out by my Fairy-type Moonblast. My opponent switches out, and then I get a free Moonblast off on the Tapu Bulu, which is a Grass Fairy that now threatens out my Tapu Fini. And so, predicting the Grass-type attack, I switch out into my Gudra, where this one has the special ability which makes it immune to Grass-type attacks. Once again, I threaten my opponent out here. What an excellent start to a battle, and a spooky one, right? I'll upload the full commentary soon, so let me know if you're interested. I cover Pokemon roles, abilities, held items, Mega Evolutions, Z-moves, team building, and more in my team building and strategy tutorial. I also talk about where and how to play, but I personally enjoy playing on both the consoles and Pokemon Showdown. Based off your suggestions, I'd be happy to do more in-depth Pokemon tutorials on a wide variety of topics. If you ever have any questions, then feel free to ask me on my Facebook and Twitter, or in the comments below on any of my videos. I started my channel with the goal of sharing what makes me happy with others, so I take every opportunity that I can to help you enjoy exploring the world of Pokemon. I also do team building workshops and coaching with Patreon supporters and Twitch subscribers. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all at my next video or during my weekly live streams at twitch.tv slash resins22.